I'll just get I'll just get right into it here. The first one is gray spray primer. Now when I first started painting miniatures, this was really the only thing available. It's, everybody used gray primer. And uh you really couldn't even get it at your game store. You'd have to go to the uh, the hardware store or the the Kmart or Walmart or so and uh and pick up your just a, you know in the automotive section or the hardware section and uh, get you some gray primer. Uh, now of course there's several different companies that make uh, spray primer, but as I said initially that everybody everybody primed gray. Uh, it's still useful if for for, for painting uh, for painting uh, neutral colors. Uh, or if you want to combine uh, bright and and and, and uh, darker colors, it's good for that too. And uh, of course, it's easier to pick out the details on, on this it, than if you uh, than if you primed it black. So that's that's one advantage. It's still it's still out there. But anyway, initially, this was it. Gray priming. Okay, the next method here is is white priming. Uh, still the preferred uh, method. Of priming for folks that paint collectors quality or uh, display uh, quality miniatures because they paint with real thin uh, layers of paint and they're not in any real uh, real hurry so they take their time spend you know dozens of hours on figures and so it's no big deal getting worrying about getting up into all the other little cracks but if you're trying to paint fast or not necessarily fast, but if you have a lot of figures to paint, you have to get up into every little crack and every uh, all up into all the recesses, and, and it really slow you down. Now, the good thing about it is, is of course, the, the colors really pop on white. Uh, again, disadvantage, man, this really time consuming. Now, I remember, uh, well, and and Forrester, the the staff painter at Reaper, uh, during her Saturday classes, of course, she she uses white prime figures exclusively and paints beautifully but I remember I went, went into her class not really a class this is where people get together and paint on Saturdays for four or five hours but anyway um, I walked in there for my figures painted uh, primed black and of course she was horrified but anyway another method widely used still used occasionally if I have brightly colored figures to paint but Mostly gotten away from it over over the last few years. Okay. All right. Next we have um, gray scale or black washing. Okay. That's just where you go one step further with your white primed figure, and you wash it with thin down black paint. Now that will. Um, fill in the recesses and then and therefore get around the problem that I just mentioned about having to get up into every little every little crack also it'll help to it'll help to define the features of the figure for you better um, especially as you as you get older uh, like me um, it's hard to see the details on on miniatures uh, like on the white if, if you uh, if it's all one color but particularly, not so much with gray, but particularly with white or black. Uh, so the black washing or gray scaling here really, really helps. And I'll to find the features. And this is this is uh, again using just watered down paint, black paint. The next priming style is black primer. Really, as far as as I can remember popularized by Kevin Dallimore who uh, in my previous video I, I talked about his, his painting style of, of, of heavy layering and the use of, of foundry paints this is good for when you use thick paint and it really speeds up your painting because you don't have to get down into every, every, every little crack again of course if you paint thin this is not the uh, this is not the technique for you also again harder to see details on the, on the solid black but uh Again, great for people who paint in, in thick paint with layers. Okay. 
really good also for painting large units because it really makes the, the details on them seem like they pop and it's again quick. Next style, next style would be just to carry that one step further. This was still one of the methods that I use because it kind of gives you the, the best of both worlds and all this is is simply black primer dry brush with a flat tip brush with white paint. Now this, the, uh, the method you use for your dry brushing you never have an have a upward stroke. Okay, You never would want to do this because then you're going to get paint up into the recessed areas which defeats the whole purpose of this technique. So when you're, when, you're, when you're dry brushing your white paint or the black paint, you want to just paint with downward strokes or with kind of a crossways strokes, but never never an upward motion. So you can paint crossways like this and just down, okay? Down, down, all the way around. And it gives you a really nice pre-shading effect. Hey, another, another method not necessarily in the in the proper sequence how I'm going here, but as far as I'm going chronologically, not so much how the uh, the techniques relate to each other. So this goes this goes back to the um, grayscale or black washing again, the figure I showed you here. Okay, where you just prime white and then just wash it in black paint. Okay, well this takes it one step further. Um, Antiquing is the same method, prime white, give it a wash of black, and then dry brush it white. And again, the details really, really pop out for you. Okay, not as dark as just black primer with white dry brushing, as you can see, but more detail than here. Especially again if it's as I said earlier for bright colors. Next method you can use is inks. In this case brown ink. You can see it really gives you good detail. Next method would be oil black washing. You just use a oil paint, thin it down with white spirit. Apply it to a figure that's been primed white. And the one uh, positive uh, aspect of using oil paints is it dries, it dries a lot slower so than, than acrylics do, so it gives you time to, to work with it. You can get a paper towel or Q-tip and wipe off the raised areas, or you, the paint might be a little too thick, and it gives you, you can see, it goes down in the recessed areas and gives you really good, good detail there. Of course, the oil paint will take take a lot longer to dry. You can speed up that drying process by just hitting it with a, a quick coat of your sealer, and that will uh, that will dry it up. Okay, the next method is uh, a combination primer, black, and ruddy brown. Ruddy brown simply being from a uh, Krylon uh, primer. It's uh, also a technique I still use. You can see it. it it's, this is really good if you're doing if you're doing a figure that has a lot of wood or fur or skin showing on it because the the uh, the ruddy brown is easier to paint to, to cover than the black. But at the same time, you can see if you turn it upside down, your your recessed areas are still. Uh, dark while your your higher areas where your skin and fur and wood and things like that uh, are a good base coat of the uh, the brown. Now of course this the method you use here you completely spray completely cover with black and then from a 45 degree angle from a 45 degree angle from above um, you spray the brown. Okay, so you don't spray it up from underneath or from the side you spray it from the top. Next technique. It takes that black ruddy brown one step further and you follow up with a, a tan dry brushing again. As I mentioned with the black and white, black with white 
paint and dry brushing. You only do it from the side or from above. It gives you a real good, really makes the details pop out. And again, lightens that brown a little bit for you. And of course, you can see that's a method I still use and I'm using on these ogres here. There's another one. If I'm below, nice and dark from the top, nice and light. next method is pre-shading. This uh, method can be used by, by uh, folks who paint uh, thicker but this is mainly used for people who use airbrushes or who paint thinly because it gives you as you can see natural natural shading before you even start painting. What you do here prime the entire figure black then from 45 degrees above, hit it with gray, not too thick though, and then from directly above, hit it with white. So you can see from underneath, you still got your nice dark shading. Okay, from the side, it's more gray, and from the, from the top, white. Really useful, really helps you to, to, see, uh, to see what's going on with your figures, and then of course, I, I also still use this this method even even if I'm painting thick. And last but not least, we have the current craze or uh, popular method, and that's Army Painter. Comes in a variety of colors, and mainly useful for painting large units. And it's just a, a color primer, sprays. It's acrylic, sprays on very smooth, very fine pigments, dries quick. This color here I use happens to be the uh, color primer uh, Dragon Red. So, good starting point for very popular people that paint Space Marine armor, I've, I've noticed, and uh, vehicles that don't have necessarily have access to an airbrush. Okay, guys. Well, that's it. I'll go over them to wrap it up. I'll go over them again real quick. You have gray. All right. Gray primer. Number one. Two. Anybody remember? Right. White. Three. Gray scale or black washing. Four. Black. Five, black with a white dry brush. Six, antiquing. Remember, gray scaling with just a white dry brush. Top. Seven, ink. Eight, oil. Nine, black with ruddy brown on top. Ten, black with ruddy brown on top, followed up by a tan right brush. And pre shading, solid black, gray from a 45. Like from above, and 12 Army Painter. All right, guys, hope that helped uh, one or two folks anyway. So, thanks for watching. Uh, see you again soon. Keep your positive attitudes and keep painting.